Hi there everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new T-Motor Velox V3 motors. But just doing a product review of these motors isn't all that exciting, so I'm going to be using these motors to answer a question that I was asked recently, which is how much does the temperature of a motor really affect its performance? We're going to be taking some of these new Velox V3 motors and putting them in the freezer and heating them up with a heat gun before testing to see how much the temperature of the motor affects the test results. I can't wait to share these results with you and it's a lot to cover in one video. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. If you're interested in recommendations for motors, props or other components for your next FPV build, then head on over to my website. There's a link down in the video description. I've got a whole section there dedicated to recommending parts for different types of FPV drone based on all of the scientific test work that I've done. There's also all of the test results there for you to look at, so you're sure to find all the information you need to make the right choice. Don't waste your money, check out that link down below. Let's start by taking a look at these Velox V3 motors on the bench. And the first thing I notice when looking at these motors is that they use a two-piece bell design, which means that the top part of the bell, the aluminium part, doesn't extend all the way down over the steel flux ring. Instead, you have two pieces that are bonded together by a push fit and maybe some adhesive. Now this is a cheaper and lighter weight way to make a motor, but it isn't quite as durable as a unibell design because there's always a small chance that the two parts of the bell could separate in a crash. This does depend a lot on manufacturing tolerances and whether adhesive is used to hold the two parts together. But in general, a unibell design is always going to be slightly heavier and slightly more durable. The motor has a four millimeter shaft with an M3 screw to attach the bell onto the stator. And this is a pretty standard arrangement and having an M3 screw is good because it means it's less likely to strip out. If we remove that M3 screw, we can start to take the motor apart. And I find the easiest way to take these motors apart is if they're attached to the arm of a quadcopter, you can just undo that M3 screw and replace it with a long metal screw and then give that longer screw a sharp tap with a hammer and that just separates the rotor from the stator. Once we've got the motor apart, we can see that inside the rotor, there is some balancing mud at the top. So this motor has been dynamically balanced. And we can also see that there's a little metal washer and an O-ring on the shaft. And that O-ring is there to cushion the top bearing in a sharp crash. And that does help preserve that top bearing and help it run a little bit smoother for longer. This O-ring has become pretty standard on all good quality motors nowadays, and it is something that I look for when judging how well a motor is put together. If we look now at the stator, we can see that it's a pretty typical design. We have an aluminium base of the motor with two nine millimeter bearings pushed in and the silicon steel stator laminations push fit over the base. This motor uses single strand windings, which means that it's going to be good for high performance applications because single strand windings have much better cooling performance than multi strand windings in my testing. So that's nice to see, particularly on the higher KV versions of this motor, where you're going to be putting a lot more power into the motor at full throttle. Now that we've looked at the Velox V3 on the bench, we can see that it's a well made motor and that it's very representative, very typical of the type of motors that we use in FPV. And that makes it perfect for this next batch of testing where we look to see how the performance of the motor varies across temperature. So I'm going to be taking the same motor and testing it after it's been sitting in the freezer and cooled down to minus 18 degrees. We're going to be looking at it at ambient temperature, 25 degrees, and we're going to be heating it up with a heat gun to 60 degrees before starting the test. And then we can see how all of these different temperatures compare in terms of both the efficiency of the motor and its maximum thrust. If we look at a thrust versus electrical power plot for these tests, we can see not only the peak thrust produced and the peak electrical power consumed, but also the efficiency of the motor across the whole throttle range. And although we might expect some effect of temperature on performance, what we see from these results is that that effect on performance is vanishingly small for this Velox V3 motor. From minus 18 to plus 75 degrees C, we don't see a significant effect on the peak thrust, on the peak power, or the efficiency of the motor. And that's really great to see because it means that we can be confident that the performance of this motor is gonna remain good across a wide temperature range. Even if you're flying in the height of summer or in the depths of winter, you're gonna be getting the same performance near enough in both cases. And it's good to know that neither the magnets nor the windings are significantly affected 
by variations in temperature of a few tens of degrees. But what about a multi-strand wound motor? These motors typically get a lot hotter than single strand wound motors for the same power output, and so we might expect a bigger effect of temperature. If we look at an electrical power versus thrust plot for the Emax RS3, we do see a difference, a small difference in performance across temperature, with the minus 18 degrees C test providing more efficiency, more thrust, and consuming slightly more electrical power at the top end than the tests at higher temperature. That said, this difference is not massive. And so even with a multi-strand wound motor, provided the motor is not experiencing thermal runaway and heating up to the point where it's about to smoke, it's unlikely that you're going to see any loss in performance. And certainly at 60 degrees or 75 degrees, if you are holding that motor, you would feel it to be really hot. And you might be worried that the motor performance or lifetime was being affected. What these tests show is that provided that you can touch that motor and not get burned, the motor is probably performing almost as well or just as well as it would be at 25 degrees. Although we can be confident from these results that the performance of our motors is probably not affected too severely by different temperatures, the same cannot be said of our props. The amount of thrust that a prop is able to produce is very dependent on the air density and the air density is affected quite a lot by not only temperature, but also the altitude at which you're flying. If you're flying at high altitude or in very high ambient temperatures, the thrust of the prop is going to be reduced due to the reduction in air density. You can compensate for this by running a slightly higher pitch prop. Conversely, if you're flying in very cold ambient temperatures, you're going to see an increase in thrust due to the increase in air density, and you might decide to run a lighter pitch prop to compensate for that. Now that we've seen the results of the testing across temperature, let's put the Velox V3 up against some competition in a shootout. Before we dive into the test results, let's take a look at the measured KV of these motors. Now the 2207-2050 KV is testing out at 1990 KV, and that's okay. Somewhere between 1950 and 2000 KV is pretty close to optimum, in my opinion, for a 2207-6S motor. You have enough performance to take advantage of modern batteries, and you have one layer of thick single strand wire, which is very good for cooling. So the motor can stay cool, even delivering all that performance. If we look at the 2306, that's a 1950 kV motor, but it's testing out a little bit below 1850 kV. So quite a bit less than stated. And that's okay for a 2306. It's a lighter weight motor. You're still gonna get plenty of performance and trying to run you know, closer to 2000 kV on a 2306 is just a recipe for overheating. So that's good too. The 1750 kV 2207, I would only choose this if you're prioritizing efficiency above all else, because you're losing quite a lot of top end power for only a relatively small gain in efficiency. In my opinion, 1700 kV, which is what this tests out as, in fact, less, 1695 kV, is just too low for a modern 2207 motor. Modern batteries can provide more current than ever before, and so they can take advantage of a motor with more performance. Let's start by looking at a thrust versus throttle curve. Now the shape of this curve tells us about the top end power that the motor is able to produce, and also about its low throttle resolution. We can see that the Velox V3 has quite a hockey stick shape to this curve, so it's giving good low throttle resolution and lots of top end power, which is nice to see. We can see that the 2050 kV variant has a bit of a roll off in terms of thrust at high throttles. It doesn't stay linear all the way to 100% throttle. So we're obviously running close to some limitation of the motor in terms of either the current that it's able to draw or the mechanical torque that it's able to generate. The lower kV variants, 1950 and 1750 kV, don't see this roll off, but the 2306 1950 kV does show a little bit of a roll off as well. So that's something to be aware of when picking these really powerful high kV versions of the Velox V3. You're going to have a little bit of a roll off at the top end, which is less than ideal. In terms of the shape of the throttle curve, we can adjust this with Throttle Expo in Betaflight. So it doesn't matter so much what the, the low throttle resolution is. We can adjust that in software, but it is interesting to see that the Velox V3 has more of that hockey stick shaped curve. Good torque versus RPM results bode very well for motor responsiveness. 
The Velox V3 2207 2050 kV motor is an exceptionally responsive motor, able to accelerate and decelerate my 5x4.5x3 test prop faster than any other motor I've tested so far. If we move down to the 2306 1950 kV, that is also an exceptionally responsive motor, particularly for a 2306 size. So if you're looking for that lighter weight, smaller motor, but you still want it to be really responsive, it's a great choice. The 1750KV2207 doesn't do quite as well, and this wouldn't be a motor that I would pick if you're looking for exceptional responsiveness. If we take a look at a thrust versus electrical power plot, we can see the efficiency of the motor across its whole throttle range. And here's where the Velox V3 doesn't perform quite as well as some of its competitors. The high KV versions, the 2050KV and the 2306-1950KV, they produce a lot of thrust and power, but they fall behind a bit in terms of efficiency. And if we move down to a lower KV, like a 1750 KV, we do get better efficiency, but we lose that top end thrust and power. If we compare the V3 to the best in class, the RCM Power Wasp Major, we can see that the Wasp Major is able to produce near identical levels of thrust with 75 watts less power. And so that's the benefit of having a really efficient motor, particularly if you're going to be spending a lot of time high in the throttle. The last thing to look at is the weight of the motor. Now the 2207 comes in at 35.8 grams with 5 inch wires and the 2306 comes in at 32 grams. Now 35 grams is actually quite heavy for a motor of this design. It's got a two-piece bell so you'd expect it to be a lighter weight motor and it's coming in a little bit heavier than the average for a 2207. The 2306 is lighter but it's still reasonably heavy for a 2306. So this is something to be aware of. These aren't the lightest weight motors that you can buy, but they do provide very good performance even for their weight. All right, so that brings us neatly to the end of this video. And as always the question, who are these motors right for? Well, I think these Velox V3s are very well made and very highly performing motors, especially the 2207 2050 kV and the 2306 1950 kV. They are not quite efficient enough or lightweight enough to trouble the very top of my motor leaderboard, but they're getting pretty close. So whether they're the right motor for you is going to depend a lot on pricing. If you're able to get hold of these Velox V3s for under $20 a motor, I think they are definitely to be recommended. They are doing fantastically well against any other motor at this price point. But if you're looking at spending more like $25 on a motor, then you should definitely look towards some of the motors made by RC and Power which perform a little bit better in terms of efficiency and they're quite a bit lighter weight as well. So hopefully that gives you a good recommendation for whether these are going to be the right motors for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for recommendations for motors, props and other parts for your FPV drone, please check out the link down in the video description. I've got a whole section of my website dedicated to recommendations for different parts based on my testing. If you really enjoy these videos and get a lot of value out of them and want to give something back, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and all of that money goes to helping me make more and better videos for you and other people in the FPV community. If you're able to support me, I would really, really appreciate it. And there's a link to that down in the video description as well. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.